we I pulled off the ultimate man tinkering move last night. My wife has no idea what goes on in the backyard as far as what I do with landscaping. And I told my landscaper, I said, put a 10-foot strip right at the edge of the grass. Put a putting green. Like just so I can roll 10 footers, make it break left to right one way, <laughs> right to left the other way. And it's just a great thing to do. Like watching playoffs, it's like commercial or intermissions. I just go out there and roll putts. Mm -hmm. so it's just, make a bunch of putts. So it got, it got dirty. There was stuff on it. So I got the blower out and I had to clear the green. The wife looks out and she goes, looking good back there. Doesn't even know what I'm doing. <laughs> Looking good back there. As soon as she walked away, I just threw the blower and just started rolling putts. And she thought I was just like a manly man. Thought you were working. Yes, yes. yes. It was like a oh. movie comment. She just looks out. Looking good back there. As I love soon as it. She walked away. I chucked that blower and I put the balls back down and I just started rolling putts. And I said, she thinks I'm doing like man stuff. Back Tinkering. Here. No, Tinkering. she's married to a greenskeeper. I love it. <laughs> yes. You're a greenskeeper. You're Dougie McIntyre. I'm you're Dougie back there. Bill Murray. I'm a, I'm a grass yeah. cutter. I'm yeah, a, a grass, grass cutter. And you're out there just absolutely rolling the rock. I love it. By the it. way, is it confirmed? Because I started to get scared yesterday that maybe Bobby Mack is not. No, he's with... out, man. It's, it's like the PGA Tour announced it, like tweeted it out that he's not playing at the Memorial. Like, I don't know if he has the ability to get back in. I don't think so. That wouldn't be fair to whoever replaced him. You know what's going on? Yesterday was the longest day in golf, right? There's all these qualifiers all over the place. Yeah. I saw my man Zach Blair qualified. As well, he went down to Ohio. These guys Dude, play. every guy you play with gets dialed in as soon yeah. as they leave your site. Immediately. Like, whisper, he was. He was. Whisper. <laughs> he 24 or something at the Open, and then he rolled down to somewhere in Ohio to qualify for the Open. And, and he won top spot. He was like nine under over 36 holes. But our boy Harry Higgs, you see, he won in a playoff. And Harry's on his way to the U.S. Open. Love it. And Harry had won two like back-to-back -back Corn Ferry tournaments. And now he's going to the U.S. Open. And I could see Harry being a part of the picks next week. I don't know if wow. he's going to win, but I could see Harry getting into the top 20 or top 30. Might be worth a, a sprinkle on all Harry Higgs. He's still Love got it. the same vibe out there. He's still playing his game. So You know what, Hayes? You could... You almost might have a resume where you you could sell to people if the you golf with me. Yeah, mm -hmm. like if you if you golf Raffle. with me at the pro am, that you have success. You're gonna and, make money, and you could show a track record, and and say, look at what the guys that I've golfed with immediately what they did mm -hmm. that weekend and afterwards. Yeah. Like you could actually, there's be, there might be some analytics tied to it. No, oh, I, I think it's you, factual. The, the, the party, the pairing party for the Pro-Am, you just raffle off. You say, look at this guy's track record of everyone he's played with, where they finish, who wants a piece of the action, and mm -hmm. you get the players yeah. to bid on you. But there's also the <laughs> chance the players would lug up and say, there's no way in hell I'm paying to play in the Pro-Am with that. Yeah, show. I don't think they're ever going to actually buy into that type of stuff and that type of superstition, but it's a fact. I played I, with Nick Taylor. He wins the Canadian Open the next year. I played with Tommy Fleetwood. He loses in a playoff. This year, Zach yeah. Blair, my boy, came out of nowhere, was on fire all week, and now he's going to the U.S. Open. I don't like, think these are just a, This is factual. This is just the way I operate in a Pro-Am. I, I have great I, mojo at a Pro-Am. I don't think you have to pay. Oh, I think what they do is say, "I'll golf with that fight guy, for it. and I'll give him. I'll give him no <laughs> fight. I'll give him two percent, like almost like a caddy's percentage. Yes. If I win or of the purse, it'd be like I'll put up. I'll give three percent. I'll give four percent. Whatever, because there's no money out of pocket. But if they win, then Hayes, you get paid. That's like, a that's, great idea, man. That's like getting stock in a company instead exactly. of getting paid, you get, right? You get points on the deal. That's I'll, basically I'll what it is. I'll take points on the deal. Next year at the RBC Canadian Open, points on the deal. You want to you want to golf with me? I get points on whatever you win. Yeah. I think that's very now, reasonable. Now, I got a question. Does our guy Fluff get paid? Like I, I've been thinking a lot about him. Like 10 that was kind of, of a, what CT Pan makes. That's what he's getting. I don't know where CT ended. He made the weekend. He made the cut, so he made some scratch. But yeah, it's a good question, Noodles. Like, what's up with Fluff? Like, is Fluff like, making the full top dollar? I mean, he only he walked three holes on Sunday. I think he, he calls it quits. I'm telling you, I think that's the that's the I end think game Fluff, Fluff. But yeah, yeah, it's it'll be disappointing. But I I think that could be the end of the road. Um, yeah. Anyway, Mike Johnson coming up here in a moment. Confirm it tonight later in the hour. You see Pierre Lebrun uh, 
has a, a quote, I guess, a message from Darren Ferris, Mitch Marner's agent, and saying, as of now, Mitch's stance is that he intends on playing out and honoring the final year of his contract and isn't talking about leaving and isn't talking about an extension. Just going to honor the final year. What do you yeah. guys make of that? Well, I mean, it is interesting because I think what it is is a, a volley. So you, you lob the ball into the Maple Leafs side of the court and go, what would you like to do with this player? This is what our intention is. What is your intention now? Because the, you know, it takes two to tango here. Now, Mitch and his representation, his inner circle, they control all the cards right now. But that's for the next 82 games. What the Toronto Maple Leafs control, you know, the next 82 as far as financially. After that, an extension, they control that. So I, I think it's it takes two to tangle, but I think the ball just gets lobbed into their court saying, what is your intention for Mitch Marner, not only this year, but in the future? Yeah, and, and listen, it's early. Get ready for it because I think there's going to be a lot of this, you know, reporting on Mitch, reporting from the Leafs. There didn't have to be an answer. Didn't have to say anything. Chose to say something. Chose. Yeah, to but that's not even really an answer. He's employed. He's got a contract for next year. And exactly. Like, Doesn't it, have but, to mean yeah. anything big yeah. picture. But it could have also just been, a, hey, we're not commenting on anything. Flushing. That happens as well in reporting. Yeah. But that's a standard right. agent. That's what else are you going to say? He's he's got a contract with the Maple Leafs and he plans to honor it. What yeah. Do you, well, but do you think if if everything was rosy, don't you think it would have been, hey, we're talking to them about extension or we're open to that? Like, I do yeah. think there's something to that, yeah. right? Uh, Where, unfortunately, things aren't rosy. No, I like, know that, that. that. That's the thing. And Mitch is a fantastic player, but I think the Maple Leafs understand that they need to switch up the mix of players. And I don't know how that plays out. Maybe Mitch plays the whole year in Toronto and he's fantastic, and then he's fantastic in the playoffs. I have no idea. But if it was on my watch, there would be different players playing for the team. How they go about that, it's an awfully difficult thing. It's easy to say, but it's difficult to do because the players have the hammer where they can stick their middle finger up and say, mm -hmm. I got a no movement clause, and I'm not going anywhere. Yeah, so don't exactly. Don't even ask me. And the, don't, even, like, don't even ask me. Yep. And the, and right. then, But then it opens the door. How do the Leafs react to that? Right In that hypothetical, do they say, okay, fine, that's it. Bygones be bygones, let's play. Or is it okay? We're going to get ugly here, and we're going to leak stuff, and we're going to make your life difficult. I mean, there's different ways to play this out, and I'm not even sure if that's in their best interest. What like, do you if, mean by leak stuff? Well, you, you leak it to the media. We've asked him to wave. We, we don't want him as a Maple Leaf anymore. Right. Then Mitch has got to answer first day of camp. Hey, Mitch, what do you make of the Leafs not wanting you here? That'll be great. Ooh. That's That's going to be fun for everybody involved. Uh, here's Mike Johnson, our TSN hockey analyst, joining us here in the Maple, uh, Maple Toyota Hotline. Do you read anything into this, you know, Ferris comment and the Marner stance that, hey, we're just going to honor the final year in Toronto. That's our plan as of today. Um, I kind of like you guys going back and forth there. It is, the, the whole thing is, if, if, how do the Leafs and I guess Mitch Marner get whatever they want? And I'm not sure that they even know what they want just yet, mm -hmm. right? Like, I'm not sure if Mitch knows I want to go somewhere else. I don't want to go somewhere else. I want to play the year out without an extension. I'll only play the year comfortably with an extension. Like, I don't know if they know yet what they want. The Leafs, I don't know what you're talking about. They want a different mix. I think that's probably a certainty. But how do they get it? Is Mitch Marner, what's that trade look like? How does that work? Do they get any value back? I don't think they know that either. But, um, you know, the, the, but both parties will have to be very – much on the same page for this not to get like a big spicy meatball all year long, right? Like it's Toronto, it's Mitch Marner. The fact that he has a no move, the fact that he, like every other really great player, generally signs an extension as soon as they can or some, you know, start working on extensions as soon as they can. And if they don't, um, that, that becomes annoying. Not that he doesn't have the extension, but the fact that it's going to be out there. And I'm sure Mitch and the team will say he'll talk about it once. First day in camp, and I'm not talking about my contract again until it's done or I get traded. Like, I'm sure they'll say that, but it's going to be out there. It's going to be a story that's going to be hard to ignore, and that's not good for Mitch Marner, his game, his life, his family, and that's not good for the Maple Leafs either. So, like, mm -hmm. that's the part that where, like, you know, Darren Ferris saying what? He's going to play his last year's contract? The big news would be if he said anything different. That would be news. 
him saying he's going to play last year with Zeal, that's whatever. That's stock. But it's still you still want to try to make it a collaborative effort to get to wherever they're trying to go. And mm-hmm. I, I, that will be interesting whether they do that. Well, and if it's concluded in the end from Mitch Marner that he wants to remain a Maple Leaf, then that brings on the different layer to this in terms of how the Maple Leafs handle this. And I think it's one thing to handle it privately one way and another thing to handle it publicly because I don't think they're wired this way. And I think this comes from Shanahan when he got here. You know, he wanted to protect the players. He wanted the players to feel comfortable here so that they could thrive here. He's been pro-player and pro you know, sheltering the players. And I'm not going to say babying the players, but making sure the players feel very, very comfortable, et cetera, et cetera. That would be a complete 180 to sewer a guy that's done a lot for you, that you've committed to, that's from here, that's been a great Leaf, that will be a Leaf alumni the rest of his life. I don't see that happening. And if it's concluded in the end, Marner's, Marner's playing for the Leafs, then I don't think it's in their best interest to, to allow it to go public where it gets nasty or ugly because if he's going to play for you, he, it has to work. Like if he's, if he's going to be a Maple Leaf next year, yeah. you, you can't allow it to be that ugly publicly where everyone knows that they don't want him around because how do you sell this, you know, kumbaya, one for all, all for one, if Mitch is on an island unto his uh, You're all not by himself? It both ways, Brian. Yeah, well, yeah. then that's what they, they have no. to consider all this then. Like yeah, you got to come up with the answer and pretty quickly here. Well, I, I think it really comes down to this, though, Hayes, right? Like, so you're right. If, if, they, if they are dead set, no matter what happens, Mitch will not go anywhere next year. Then it is not behoove them to get nasty, to make it uncomfortable, mm-hmm. to make it public. But if the initial stance of the martyr camp is, like they just said, we're playing our year out, then we'll figure it out. But if you think, if you're the Leafs, nah, that's what they say, but it, we can either by being nice or being not so nice, make it so they consider other options. That's where you have to, like, the, the, where you could, and you maybe almost not should, but if, you're, if you think, well, he'll, he will wave and go somewhere which will better our team going now in the future, then you probably would do what you got to do to make that happen. And, like, you're not going to be, like, ruthless, but, like, you can apply public pressure through the media mm-hmm. if that's what you wanted to do. And yeah, it's going to get uncomfortable. And yeah, it's going to get greasy in the room. And, and it would be hard for um, you know, Craig Berube to manage all that stuff. But if you have to go down that road to make it happen, then you might have to consider it if you believe you can get there. If he's so dead set, that doesn't matter. Like, do whatever you want. I'm not going anywhere. I may play crappy the whole year. Yeah. That's your problem. I'm not going to do anything. I get my money regardless. So forget you. Then, then he's got you. But if you don't think he's quite that determined in his stance, then I could see an opening where it might get a little, a, a little less, a little less nice. Mm-hmm. Well, what do you make of, okay, so you're right. It's a stock answer. We've got a contract. We're going to play it out. But keep in mind, Brad Tree Living has gone through this scenario with Johnny Goudreau. He went through it. You know, Matthew Kachuk was different because Kachuk went to him and by all accounts, his camp and, and said, hey, you know, we don't want to sign a long-term deal. But both of have those to instances, it. Jamie, were the players that didn't want to play. Yeah, Tree wanted to keep those guys. But, Does he but, want to keep Marner? We don't but have that's, that answer. That's where I'm going. That you you got to figure that out. You either want to sign him to an extension. But my, I'm going back to you can't let an asset walk for nothing. Like, that's where you've got to sort that out because... You have no choice, Noodles. Well, I, I let, agree. I, I mean, you, Let's say you come to the conclusion you want that eleven, twelve million million stuff elsewhere, and that's just the reality. Not, no, no, no slander on Mitch Marner. He's an incredible player. You just want to do it differently. Right. But Mitch is also of the mind, I'm not going anywhere, which is his right, and you should not boo him or hold it against him. He earned and paid for that no-move clause with his play and his contract. So has every right in the world to say, no, I'm not going anywhere. So if those two things are happening, which is not out of the question, then you have no choice but to lose them for nothing. Because Mitch right. has all the cards, right? Like you can say, well, we can't, mm-hmm. we can't let him walk. Well, what are you going to do? If he says, forget, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, but I'm walking on my own timeline, on my own terms, then the team has absolutely zero say in trying to recoup anything for a guy that obviously has great value around the league. 
Yeah. Un- yeah. Unless you throw. Okay. So again, you try and keep it amicable, which it sounds like it's amicable. Like I don't. Sure. So Everyone want to. Yeah. Maybe you look at. It, you look at saying what's. What's an extension look like? Like if you know what is if you try and at least ask like what is what does it look like? Is it eight years at twelve and a half? Like what does it look like? That's and, but exactly then, what it looks like. Okay, exactly. yeah, and then but then you got to figure out if you want to do that and move them. You know it, because at least it's cost certainty and you would be able to get recoup something. Well, he's gonna gonna, he's gonna guarantee no movement, no trade. Yeah, no, you're right. He's not I, he's I, not gonna sign here no, knowing that they're way, gonna trade him. You know, that you can work this if you say, all right, listen, Mitch, we'll let you walk. Guess what you get on your next contract? Seven years at 12 and a half. Right. We can sign and trade you eight years at 12 and a half to a place that you want to go. Right. Like Matthew Kachuk did. We don't see sign and trades very often in the NHL, but that's the only bit of leverage the Leafs have over Mitch Marner, other than making life unpleasant, to get him to do what they want, is that if we trade you but sign you first and we work together – you get the eighth year. If you just walk, you get the seventh. And if you think you're making 12 and a half, seven years from now, you probably won't. You're going to lose six, seven million dollars, whatever the number is. Mm-hmm. Maybe that, that little carrot. But beyond that, Noodles, if he's, he's dead set on not leaving this year, nothing they yeah. can do. Well, and this is the conundrum that the Leafs have is that in this market and this fan base, Mitch Marner solely represents change. That's what's created here. That's what has has happened in the last month. It's fairly, how it's morphed into that, right? Like fairly or unfairly, Johnny. On this way, one guy. It's Everyone's one guy. Kind of conceded Tavares. Yes, is, is, is off the, because 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 he's got one year left. Everyone concedes that it's not Elander and Matthews. And you know what? Nobody talks about Hayes. No one says it could be Morgan Riley. No, because that's not that that I guess doesn't represent core four big enough, or people just haven't turned on Mo the way that they have mm. on Mitch Marner. But that is the reality, again, purely anecdotal, but we all have these conversations all over the city. The only guy I get asked about is Mitch. And in other words, if you could turn over the other 22 guys on the roster, <laughs> if Marner stays, that's not change. If Marner <laughs> goes and literally everyone else returns, that's change in the eyes of Leaf fans. That's what the Leafs are dealing with right now. That's what Shanahan's dealing with. Tree living's dealing with, and it's irrational. It's it's fickle. It might turn like maybe there's a world that we exist in where Mitch Marner is a proud guy, which I know he is. I'm sure he is, and might think, "Give me this opportunity to redeem myself. Let me play it out, and I'm going to get everyone behind me." That would be a great story. That maybe that maybe that's what he's thinking. I don't want to leave because I don't want to run from it. I'll take the heat. And I'm going to show you guys you want me to be a leaf. That would be a great story. I have no but problem with that. that, that I would love that. I'd like to see him address that. I, I don't think I don't know if he will, that. but I'd love to see said it. I'd love to see him step up and just say, "I'm a Leaf. I love being a Leaf. I'm going to be a Leaf, and everyone's going to love me. Watch, and I'm winning right here. That would be an incredible scene, and if he follows through on it, it would be one of the coolest mic drops in sports history. But he represents change solely, and that's I don't recall anything like this before in the past. Where, like, it's one thing to run. This isn't a run out of town thing. This is existential. This is bigger than that. This is, uh, it's it's just, it's snowballed to a point. Yeah. And where I'd like eight to years of this, one. It's, it's Mitch Marner, and that's it. And that's and where people And I'd like to stand. clarify, like, I don't think he played particularly well in the series against Boston. But it's all of these guys together that doesn't work. I don't think anyone on this show, I know I definitely have said, this is Mitch Marner's fault. Right. It's all of them together as a group. They don't work and they don't get it done and they don't win. How everyone is surrounded. I guess they're just looking at him and Tavares because their contracts are up. And they're like, Mm -hmm. William Nylander had a fantastic year. Austin Matthews is just not even an option. But he never takes any. He hasn't won anything more than Mitch has. And it's not about blasting He's a part of it too. But yeah, he's won just as much. He also rips home 70, so he excuses himself from criticism. But he's part of not getting it done too. Right. But I, I definitely don't think, for me personally, this is not a Mitch Marner problem. Has he not? Ha, could he have played better? Absolutely. In all of the playoff series, you're looking around, you're saying, Mitch Marner is not, he's not doing the things he does in the regular season. He's not doing things to help the team contribute. And sooner or later, this is just the way I look at it, you, you, you just look at it and say, we got to get something different in here. Because all of these guys together, they don't perform come come gut check time Mm -hmm. so it's just it's one of those things and for anybody to think especially the players that change is like crazy or like 
whoa, me? Like, why are you doing this? What are you, nuts? Like, this is pro sports. This could have happened five years ago. After right. two or three cracks where you stumbled, somebody could have said, we're, we're doing something different here. That's just right. what happens, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I, I think the, the, the first point is a prescient in that it is become Marner or nothing. Right? He's the only guy that seems to be – that was satisfied – the need for change, but that's probably not, that's probably not fair and not even accurate. And even though it's become, it's come to that, it's, it's worth noting, like that's probably not the only thing they could do. And it's probably not fair that, that he's become the only guy. Oh, it's right. The contract sort of dictate that, but there's that other thing is guys, what do you think about this analogy? I was just sort of thinking when the Rangers lost out. So Artemi Panarin, who undoubtedly is one of the best players in the league, he will get heart trophy votes because he deserves to. He isn't also a guy who, his production has gone down considerably relative to his regular season production in the playoffs. Ghost. And Panarin is not the fastest, not the strongest, doesn't, you know, he doesn't shoot the best. He creates with his mind, his skating, finding time and space, and he lights it up in the regular season. Sounds like Mitch Marner a little bit, right? Marner's better defensively, but just think about offense. They kind of create by being creative and finding passing lanes and that kind of stuff. And I wonder if there's a parallel there that because Panarin can't sort of create space on his own because he's not fast enough and not strong enough, that he's, you know, he's still very good, but not great in the playoffs. And Mitch, a little bit of the same thing where, you know, he doesn't create space for himself as easily with his size, maybe not even his breakaway speed. He has to use his head and his edges and all the rest of it. And there's just less of that in the playoffs. And he goes from like all the world to just really, really good in the playoffs. And I wonder if there's a parallel there for guys in that style. Because like Willie Nylander is physically more gifted. Like he can skate faster than, than Mitch and stronger than Mitch. And so like he can create his space in the playoffs. I think that helps him be productive. I just I was just thinking about the Panarin Marner sort of parallels there. Two guys who are just absolutely incredible. Let and me bring up one other guy, good. Mike. Let me bring yeah. up one other guy, and then you can tell me what the difference is. He's number 21 for the Tampa Bay Lightning. Same size, same weight, same everything. He might be smaller than those two players you just mentioned, Panarin and Marner. But what's mm-hmm. the difference, and why is that guy so clutch in the playoffs? You tell me the one reason you think. He's way faster. Way, way faster. Braden Point's one of the faster players in the league. Okay, you can and, give him faster. My my reasoning would be and, he goes to the front of the stronger. net and he goes sure. to the, he he goes to right in front of the net. If you look at all of Braden Point's playoff goals, yeah. he goes to well, right in front of the net. I yeah. I, I those are There's great more points. power in his game though. Oh, like he's like he's lower body powerful, even though he's short. But yes, like I think that's the difference. He's like physically stronger than those two other guys. Well, and and that's the one thing, Johnny. You said like those guys are formidable in the regular season. But the one thing we've noticed, I think all of us could speak to it too, is there's no space for dipsy mm-hmm. doodling and dinking around in the playoffs. Like everything, it, it's straight line. If you're going to make a play, it's got to be at a high pace, a high rate, and it's a quick give and go with somebody else. Like Marner's game, a lot of times when in the regular season, is about slowing it down. It's mm-hmm. about there's no slowing it down no. in the playoffs. Straight if lines, anything, man. it speeds and you up. You got to be creative so, below but, the goal but, line, around the net, and you could do it. But he just hasn't found. He hasn't. But, it just hasn't clicked for him. But that's, but that's the thing. Like it's it's hard because you can look at regular season players, and then you go, how does their game translate to the playoffs? You know, I've said it along. Hayes, you've been talking about it. like the way Drysaddle's able to. People are like he elevates. If you watch him in the regular season, he welcomes contact. He's not afraid of it. He actually turns his back. Like so, Drysaddle's game in the regular season translates to the playoffs because he's big, he's strong, he actually hits, he, he receives hits. So there's guys that have to change or at least learn to change their game in the playoffs. And Johnny, you, you bring up Panarin, you bring up guys like Mitch Marner. Mitch Marner is not going to have a breakaway and be looking to throw it back like he <laughs> does in the regular season. In the we see it in the neutral zone, the one play he headed it, and the skate plays and that that stuff doesn't happen in the playoffs. The fancy plays, it's straight line, it's digging in, and then use your vision and your talent to to distribute the puck. He hasn't been able to find that mix yet mm-hmm. consistently in the playoffs. Same thing with Panarin, and I'm sure there's other players in the league we could circle and say that game doesn't translate to the playoffs. But as a group. You come back to what O said, 
this group hasn't been able to get over the hump. Just the, the collective five, we call them, you know, with, with Riley included. That's why people are yelling and screaming, saying, these guys can't get it done because they've got a template going, they get to this point and they can't get over the hump. Mm-hmm. So are you going to continue to bring it back or are you going to try and change something there and then get them over the hump? Yeah, I don't think anyone, I think even the players, like they don't want to go anywhere. And, and of course they're going to believe that they could do it because that's what players do. But even the players would be like, it's not, we shouldn't be surprised if there are changes. We've right. had too many cracks at this. We're like, no one, nobody should be surprised. Now, what that change is and what they need, those are all interesting conversations because there's no real right answer. You know, but I think to suggest that change should be coming is obvious to everyone, including the players. But it's, I, I do, like what Brian was talking about, it is, it is interesting and almost, I don't know, unfortunate is not the right word, but unfair, the way mm-hmm. it's sort of just bullseyed in on Mitch Marner. Because he's not alone in, you know, the other guys are not absolved from criticism because they have new contracts. But like, they, the power play was over. I'm pretty sure those they other guys all are on all the power play, yep. and they yeah. make less than much money and more. Like, he's not the only one. So I think in that sense, he is taking a disproportionate brunt of the responsibility mm-hmm. for all the failures, but certainly this most recent one in this past year. No question. No question. Yet, it's Fan bases don't have to be rational. It's, no, it's right? They're fans. Yeah. They're allowed to think what they want. And and the issue that you're also going to deal with here, and it's something I'm sure Mitch is going to handle, all of them have to handle collectively, right. is if when it, when it spins past like apathy over to another side where it's resentment, that's hard yeah. to pull back. You know what I mean? Like when... When fans start, yeah, looking at a handful of players or a group or whatever, and they like resent them, that's that's when you know it's ugly, and it's t- and you have to change. Like from from a business standpoint, you you have to. Um, but nothing's going to happen tonight, to our knowledge. We'll find out. I mean, I think in the next few weeks, though, we're going to get some answers, one way or the other, well, Johnny. If they get through the draft and get through July first, and they don't, and they're all the good players, because like maybe they trade somebody to free up salary. If those salary other good players are gone, if Montour is gone, if, you know, whoever the Matt Roy, whoever they might want to go for is, is gone, then for the window of opportunity is also gone. So you're right. Like if nothing happens in the next, well, I guess it's a month now, almost until July 1st, then I would anticipate we're hunkering in for the long haul. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. yeah. Buckle up, man. It's going to be one hell of a fall, man. That's September. Those opening day pressers, Will be wild, wild. But at the same time, once the puck drops and the season starts and they're winning games and Matthews is ripping home goals, you know, people will probably fall into a similar trap. It yeah, looks pretty they good. Pre- I'm telling yeah, you, it looks pretty good. Right I like now. these Mitch, guys. Mitch Marner is going to have a pace of, he'll be on pace like Nylander was, pace for 140 points yeah. and you got to <laughs> sign him and you got to do all this. And, and, and I don't know, will these conversations it's on the, it's be on, forgotten? It's on management, though, to make those calls, Noodles. Right. right, like they're they're the ones that have to make the right decision. Like we mm-hmm. talked about the other day, fans are going to get some things right collectively, some things wrong, but it's the job of the manager to make sure you get it right. Yeah. Like they they they're the ones that ultimately have to figure this out. Or um, at least more right than wrong. Anyway, ex- of course, you never you're not batting a thousand, but right. yeah, but you can't. But whatever they do, they can't miss on this. They cannot. No, miss on whatever decision, contract, whatever they're going to do, they cannot miss on this. That's 100% true. All right, Johnny, we'll tee up uh, game one later in the week. Sounds good, boys. Have a good day. Mike Johnson, our TSN hockey analyst, joining us here on the Maple Toyota Hotline. Check out Maple Toyota's huge truck and SUV lineup, including Tundra, Forerunner, Highlander, and Grand Highlander in stock and ready to deliver. Visit mapletoyota.com. Confirm and deny next. All right, Confirm and Deny, brought to you by Summit Ford and South Lake Ford Lincoln, where there is no such thing as a no trade clause. Any make, any model, any time, visit summitford.com or southlakeford.com. Confirm and deny. Statements are made. We go around the table. We confirm them or we deny them. Very simple stuff. Confirm and deny. Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl need a Stanley Cup to be considered an all-time great duo. A hundred percent. I'll mix in a Jerry's with a Fergler. A hundred percent confirm. Hmm. I think you talk okay. about the duos, Taze and Kane, Crosby, Malkin, Gretzky, Messier. It's like you got to get it done, man. And the way that things work in the world today, 
and Jamie touched on it earlier in the season. It's like these guys want to get one done together at Edmonton. I think that that's business that's in order for both of these guys where they said we were drafted here. God knows what's going to happen in the future because – I don't know the way things are these days if everybody is totally committed to saying, I'm with that team for life. I started here and I'm playing there for life. I don't know. Not everybody's caught it, cut out for everything that's offered to the organization that they're drafted by. But I truly believe that these two, their main focus is to get one in Edmonton and then who the hell cares or knows what's going to happen after that. It's a Fergler, it's a Jerry, it's a combo pack, and it's 100% confirmed. <sighs> I'm going to confirm it just because, <laughs> it's, I mean, oh, you laid, you, you, you make some great points. I'm confirming it just because when we look at duos, the one common denominator is success, right? You know, Lemieux and Yager, you know, like Sacking, Sid and Gino, Forsberg, you know, Sid Gino. Like you, yeah. Right. It, it just, it, it's tied to success. You could, I don't know. I, I would argue. What is the greatest duo that never did anything? Well, that's your answer. That's why I think it is confirm around the table because, right. you know, I, I don't, is it, I mean, I, I think of Korea, Solani, you know, there's a number of them that we could come up with, and I'm not suggesting they're on the same level, but they were a great duo in Anaheim. They went to a right. cup final. Um, you know, the Legion of Doom, that's a three-pack, but still, it's a confirm. You have to win the Stanley Cup to, to right. be in that echelon of, you know, goat status, or or to be to to be remembered. Think like, that's really Stevie what it comes y, down man. to. Think about Stevie Y. He was like in the group with Mario and Wayne. Stevie Y used to get back in the day, a hundred and fifty points a year, as if that's not enough street cred in that league. But his his whole vibe and his whole aura just shot through the roof when he started the back to back cups. Mm -hmm. Because right. it went from Stevie Y, the point producer, to Stevie Y, the gutty, gritty champion. The guy that p killed penalties and blocked shots and played on a broken leg. I played golf with Stevie Iserman two weeks after they won the Stanley Cup up in Muskoka. The guy could hardly walk. And I said to myself, that guy can't even walk and he beat us. Like, that's – like, it. it's just a different level, man. Mm -hmm. Stevie Y is an example of just winning that cup – what it does to your whole vibe. Yeah. Yep. It changes your whole resume, Everything, your reputation, man. who you are, what you represent, and what you represent moving forward. You're a champion forever. And um, they're obviously the best duo in the NHL. They have been for quite some time. But you look at, you know, whether it's McKinnon, Ranton, and McKinnon, McCarr, those guys have something that these two don't. Right. You know? They've, like they've it, finished. Yeah, yeah they finished. finished. Exactly. Kucherov and Point or Stamkos, Hedman, whatever the duo happens to be there. They they have something these guys don't. You you you've got to get it. Like you just yeah. you you have to win to ultimately get to the top. And if you're going to be considered an all-time great duo, like right now they're one of the all-time great regular season duos, undoubtedly. Like their statistics right. speak to that. But you got to win a cup to get over the top. And once they do that, it is immediately established. You know, I I don't think they'll match what Gretzky and Messier represented. I think that's asking too much. But. I mean, they're immediately the second greatest duo, clearly, in Oilers history. Um, and, you know, one of one of the great modern duos. That, that's what they're they're going for here over yeah. the next two and a half weeks. No, and, and success, that's what people look at. You win, like, you know, it, a lot of people will remember the runs, obviously will remember runs. Like, Montreal went to the finals. Like, you know, you look at Vancouver's been to the finals, but mm -hmm. they never got over the line in right. recent history you got to get over the line to kind of get to that next level when people look at it and say well you know go ahead yeah well i was going to say the sedines because you made me think of that like they were a great duo great right. duo didn't win you know like right. if they if they win in 11 and they close right. their reputation is yeah. e even more established and more yeah. beloved not only in the market we're not even talking about vancouver with the sedines edmonton with these two we're talking league-wide you know right. objective viewers yeah um, no, it, it, gotta it just, have it. Yeah, I think that success tied, ties to that next level. Okay. Um, confirm and deny one of Mitch Marner or John Tavares will sign an extension with the Leafs this offseason. 
You had to do it, huh? You just had to do it. I so waited a this, few weeks. Hold on. This offseason? <laughs> yeah. Like this you're saying this, this like in the next summer. three months. You waited a few weeks, but you show, it, you still showed up at the drive-in with a new yeah. girl, Hazy, and yeah, you exactly. just you did it. You did us dirty with this one. No, mm-hmm. this isn't dirty at all. It's deny. It's the business. Deny. It's it 100% deny. deny it's 100% yes. of denial? It. it an extension in the next three by September first. Yeah, by the time no, they start denying. playing next denying, year, I'm denying, denying it. Denying it. Mitch Marner we just, just talked about change. You're getting different players. You're not giving out extensions. Like, would this uh, team? Would anything shock you? This would shock really me. would it shock you? I, I, it would shock I, me. Okay, no, unless it was a sign and trade. Which would that would wouldn't really count? I guess, nah, I guess you're right. That's that would sneaky. count. That, 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 that is, wouldn't that count. It wouldn't count. It would That's not sneaky. count. That's it sneaky. It would count. It would count. An extension is an extension. Okay. Well, from that standpoint, I'd think about it, but uh, I'll I'll deny it. I think the Marner one just seems like we just talked about it for half an hour. It's different. Tavares, I, I don't think they'll extend him, but if you were to extend him, it would look so different compared to what he's making right now. I don't even think that would make sense from a PR standpoint because it would just highlight how overpaid he is. You know what I'm saying? Like, imagine you sign a three-year extension at $3 million per. You're basically saying you're a $3 million player right now, but here's 11 for the season. Like, that's when you shelve and you say, we'll do it next year. We can't do it right now. It's just going to make everyone's life, mis- life miserable right. over the course of the season. Um, confirm and deny Alec Manoa has pitched his final game for the Blue Jays. That's a, that's a dark one. This season or co- total? Ever. I mean, this elbow thing, it sounds like it's pretty significant. If he goes under the knife and he's gone for a year, like if he if he has to have surgery and he's out of sight, out of mind for a year, you think he's going to pitch again? You think the Jays? Yeah, I do. I think he's too young. I think that he just – I think there's too much there. It's sad, and it, this might blow up in my face, and this guy might just be go down a dark road. I hate to think of that. I know. But I just think he just picks up the pieces and figures it out somehow. I'm going to deny this so. completely, and I think it's ignorant you even put it together. All right. I understand <laughs> that. I just I think it is it is a sad reality right now. I, wor- I worry for the guy's health. Um, it wasn't a lock he was going to finish the rest of the year here anyway, just based on merit. You know, like he's he was three or four bad starts in a row from people starting to say, what are you doing here? Like you can't keep giving him opportunities. It's It's been a really tough year. If, if I will, I will confirm it with this asterisk. If he's out long term, I don't. I don't think you. Okay. I don't. I just don't think they're going to sit there and say, "We'll let you rehab. We'll let you go through it." I think that's going to be very difficult for both parties so, to to endure. If he, if he's out for long term, then I'm going to confirm it. Mm-hmm. And which again, we don't have the answer, and I don't want to put that into the universe. But it does seem like he's in a pretty. He could be in a bad place. If you're going for second opinions and stuff, like that's never a good sign. No. Uh, confirm and deny. Luka Doncic winning an NBA title will catapult him to face of the NBA status. I'm going to say I'm going to confirm it. They're, he's getting props right now. He's getting some old school guys saying this guy's like a. He's a beast. He's yeah. a beast and a killer. And they're mm-hmm. saying all the cool things. And it's amazing how I, I love the transformation of just like skill guy that could do unbelievable things. I love the transformation into a killer where he's telling guys to F off after yeah. making a three. And it's a big difference. People might think it's goofy and stupid even talking about stuff like that, but it's a big transition from, <clears throat> and I always talk about it, Hayes, a guy that really cares a lot, has skin in the game, and it's all on his shoulders, and he really cares about winning. And I, I just love that transition. It's it, To me, it, it yeah. means a lot, and it's big. I'm 100% confirming it. Ant Man is right there with him, but we talked about it. I don't know who Ryan Hollins we had on. We're talking to him about the changing of the guard, man. There's no KD to talk about mm-hmm. right now. There's no LeBron. There's no Steph Curry. But it's, they're still around. I, that, that's that's the thing. Say. They're I'm still around, it. dude. But they're not factors in winning. So I, I, I know. But I understand that. It, if LeBron tweets out something right now. Like he's still like for me until LeBron. Yeah, but noodles. Is we're gone. talking about winning basketball games and competing I, 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 for championships. Yeah. LeBron's Twitter and his agent, and that has nothing. That's listen, just all periphery stuff. Okay, here, who's the face of golf? Still Tiger Woods. Yeah, it is. It is. It, 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 that, it is that's, Tiger that's Woods. Would be, that would be my. 
like come back to that. Even no if kidding, you're... he wins the player impact program. He plays twice a year. Exactly. That's that. <laughs> That's at least I'm not talking plays. about that. I'm talking about winning and no, playing games. But we're talking about face of the NBA. It's right. it's an artificial <laughs> thing. Who's it's not who's going to win the most. <laughs> Don't get all bent out of shape. No, I'm just saying we're we're not even talking on the same level here. <laughs> we're not even on the same. Well, level. then get on our level. It's face. Dude, get of on the... my level. I'm talking about winning games in the face of the game. Well, if it's just because winning. you have a TikTok account doesn't mean you're the face of the game. Yes, yeah, sadly this it is does. Insane. Sadly it does in this world. No, and, it doesn't. Hey, listen, LeBron's earned it too. Let's yeah. clear. Let's be clear. This he had guy's a good won last year, <laughs> and he's been in the league for 20 years. He's the he's the man. He's the guy that's won everything. He's done everything. He's the face of this generation. As long as he's still playing. Especially connected to a brand like the Lakers, I, I'm not sure anyone's going to knock him off. I don't, and Steph's not far behind him. Right what In terms are you of talking about who right? popularity, the fa- like if you're that. talking like ESPN has the option to show LeBron play or Luka, I'm not talking about that. But I'd that's say what we're Donchish, talking about. If Doncic is a stud and gets it done for Dallas, he's the face of the NBA. That's in your opinion. Yes, you're entitled yeah. to that. I disagree. I don't. And I, I, I gave Anthony Edwards his props. He's right behind him. It's not about LeBron anymore or KD. It's not with winning. You're, I'm not arguing that. What else is it about? What are, what, what Popular, are we talking we, we, about? We started here? talking about Caitlin Clark. She's on the worst team in the WNBA, but she's sure. the face of the WNBA, right? Like, she's not even playing that well. That's a part of it, too. Like, she's been good at times. She hasn't been spectacular, but it's, it's, it's about hype it's about following it's about brand recognition it's about s- ticket sales yeah. it's you know like it, it just i you know what we'll ask kia nurse if she's not playing right now if she deserves to be the face of the wmba because i die all i care about is performance sorry well, i hear that and luke is the man you make a valid point luke I mean, is the man listen it might be by the end of the year it might be the end of next year when Banyama. That's it the thing. Wemby's like, not. Wemby's Wemby, coming, man, in but, terms of but, performance. But what I'm saying is, and I'm going back. Oh, you're talking about performance. I'm talking about just the most popular, like the the face. Like when I think of the NBA, like LeBron still moves the needle. Tiger yes. Woods still moves the needle, even though Scheffler and Rory are better players than him right now. Like it's just, it's different. Like you said, he Tiger wins the popularity or the player's choice. But he's still Tiger, and mm-hmm. that, and LeBron is still LeBron. That's where I was going with it. It's the, like Luca and all those guys. They they're probably better players than LeBron. Although arguably they, he's they still are right now. They still they are right, right now. Like if you're building a team to win, you're taking Luca right. all day. But but I still think like it's a story when LeBron shows up on the sidelines drinking wine. Like that's that's how ridiculous this guy moves the needle. Tiger Woods makes a comment saying I'm feeling pretty good on Twitter. All of a sudden, Golf Channel's got to cover it for mm-hmm. 12 hours. Like, these guys still move the needle. So I, that's where I would, I would side with Hayes on it as far as the face of the, the, the sport still are these, these legendary players until somebody, until they, until they're done, until they don't show up, yeah. basically. And Steph's, again, Steph Curry not far behind. Katie's a bit different because people feel differently about him. And he's in Phoenix and it's just a yeah. different story. Uh, confirm and deny. Scotty Scheffler will win at least once in the next three weeks. Three big events. A hundred percent confirm. He's so pissed off at that cop. I know that tried he's to so do mad, to... man. See, he called it Louisville. Louisville, yeah. like he's just <laughs> burying that town. Yeah, he, he pronounces the S in Louisville, and people <laughs> think he's doing that just to bury them and the whole Dude, state. Dude, I'm a everyone. redneck from the north, and I don't call it Louisville. He knows like, it's Louisville. He's doing it on purpose. I think he's doing. It, he he hates that place. Yeah. Hates them. Yeah, and it, you but know, he's due, and he's pissed, and he's like, "I got to get back on track." That's what pisses him off. He's probably like, "If I wasn't doing." The driver stretch in the prison cell. Yeah. I might be a PGA champion as well right now. Yeah. And the Grand Slam would have been in play. Mm-hmm. He's pissed that he's going to come out and he's going to win. Yeah. 100% confirmed. Okay. Yeah. The tough fields, man. I'm confirming it tough too. Right, make sure you go over and do your TikToks with Gino when you're done here. So then you, <laughs> that's all you care about. The face of GSN. Uh, me? <laughs> I will do my TikToks with Gino later. Actually, I'm on with Jay tonight. Check it out. Yeah, it's on oh. YouTube as well. That's it's, what you do. I'll be, TikTok I'll be watching YouTube. it. I'll be watching. YouTube. <laughs> That's what I do. I'm, I'm about the entertainment business, man. I'm not yeah. about wins and losses. That's how I operate. Yeah. I'm going to deny this. I think Scotty, I think he's got the kid at home. He's still coming over things. Tough field, tough tracks. I don't know. 
U.S. Open. That's going to be a beast at Pinehurst at number two. To do with swaddling Changes the baby, your whole life. Handing Changes it your to whole Meredith life. and saying, "I got to get on the PGA because I'm going to the U.S. Open." Is he hitting as many Open. shots as he usually does? Is he out there with the, you know, is he rolling putts in the backyard like you are? I don't dude, even know if he is. Dude, do you think Meredith, the lovely Meredith, would say? Uh, Scotty, I don't think you're hitting as many balls as you used to because we got little Johnny at home. Mm -hmm. Maybe he took on that obligation himself. Dude, I, the guy I don't probably know. I can't goes speak to the to course it. for four hours and then he's home. When you're Might making bread like man. that, I don't think your wife's going to say, uh, don't even think about hitting as many seeds It's not as about you that. It's about him wanting to do it, him being there. It's, it's a new experience in his life. Dude, yeah. when you're a pro athlete, you're at home a lot. Like practice time, you're just home. It's not like you're going out. He's not going out and getting crushed no, at the I understand bars that. every night. I got it. Man, some crazy comments today. <laughs> Confirm or deny brought to you by Summit <laughs> Ford and South Lake Ford Lincoln, where there's no such thing as a no trade clause. Any make, any model, any time. Visit summitford.com or southlakeford.com. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on TSN 2. All right, Trevor May, Kia Nurse coming up in the final hour. Best bets brought to you by FanDuel. Overdrive continues. Brought to you by FanDuel. Bringing you everything from the opening line of the final score. Looks like um, Dome should be open tonight. Beautiful weather here in Toronto. And uh, Baltimore beat up on the Jays last night. We'll see what they have in order tonight. We'll tee that game up and creeping closer towards game one of the NBA finals on Thursday night, cup final on Saturday night. See Djokovic had to pull out of the French Open as well. And knee injury. Now people are concerned. What does that mean for Wimbledon? What does it mean for the U.S. Open? Yeah. Eventually, you know, it's going to come to an end, right? He's no longer the number one player in the world. And Nadal's done now, and Federer's done. It's kind of a wild scene in, in the tennis world. So Is he the face of tennis, though? Great question. Great question. <laughs> yeah, he is. Because he gets a tie. Yeah. Djokovic still is? He's not a winner. He doesn't win anymore. Well, I, was, I would say Yannick Sinner. Right I don't know. Yannick Sinner, he actually wins, but that's just me. I'm about winners. Dude, yeah. you just said a guy, and I like to follow Sophie Coolius on the tennis beat for, via Twitter. I've never heard Yannick Sinner's name in my life. Not familiar really? with him? No. <laughs> okay. Look him up. He's he's a pretty good player. He's my guy. I've always been a believer in him. Medvedev, <laughs> maybe. I can buy into that. Yeah. Yannick, Yannick Johnny Sinner. Johnny Sinner, he's, he's Italian. He's an yes. Italian guy. What about Carrasco? <laughs> what about him? What about El Chapo? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway, Alcatraz, Alcaraz, Alcaraz, Alcatraz. Remember, I called them that, and people were so bent out of shape. All right. Final hour coming up. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on TSN 2.